If you want to feel old, 3D print a building from a video game you used to play in college and realize that was about 20 years ago. <laughs> Welcome everyone, this is what we're modeling up today. So in case you didn't read the title, this is my version of the mech hanger from the opening cinematic of MechWarrior 4 Vengeance released in 2000. I thought it would make an awesome terrain piece for, you know, Battletech or Battletech Alpha Strike. So, this particular tutorial, oh by the way, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. It is not a step-by-step -step Blender tutorial. I do assume you know the basic operations of Blender and it's more of a workflow approach as to how I build buildings like this from scratch using 3D modeling software. All right, no more delays. Let's jump into the program. I pulled out two screenshots here that are relevant to our modeling. Here's an outside shot. And just for reference, I believe this is a raven down here. So this is a very large building. I'm not gonna print it that large, but you can if you want to. And the second relevant screenshot is here where the mechs are venturing out and you do get a shot at what appears to be the back of the hangar. And there's maybe some windows here. So there's a little bit of different design on the back versus the front. Then my next step is gonna to be to do a rough sketch of the model. So I wanna take this image here, put it flat up on the screen so I can kinda of know what I'm gonna build and it'll make my life a little bit easier. But I'm gonna start out by sketching it first just to get an idea of what the key features are that I want to include. I've got a new layer here in Photoshop and I'm gonna have some fun drawing for a while. Uh, one of the things I'm actually doing as I sketch this thing out here is that these side features that are kind of slanted, I'm going to do a separate sketch for those because I'm very likely going to build them independent of this block and attach them together later. And the process I'm going to use, I'm going to start with a bunch of guides, so I'm going to drag those in and start lining those up along key axes and therefore I can have nice clean straight lines that are all relatively accurate and geometrically correct per se for lack of better phrasing <laughs> instead of just trying to start adding lines willy-nilly. Also you might have noticed that I've only drawn up half the building. Blender's got a fantastic ability to mirror things. There's no reason to double your work. Now to complete this next step here, you want to make sure that if you go to View, Snap To, your option for guides are selected. That way you can follow these guides and get nice clean lines. So let me get this all cleaned up here and we'll be ready to jump into Blender. I'm going to hide the sketch as well as both the reference images. And then we'll export this out to a JPEG file or something and we'll bring it into Blender as a reference image. Here we are inside of Blender. I got my design loaded up here, the biggest image. This is the one I'm going to be building on top of. And then I've also brought in my actual reference images in case I want to reference those as well. So there's a free tip for you. For reference images, give them a transparent background. That works pretty well in Blender and makes your actual objects stand out pretty good. The first step here is going to be to build out the basic shape of the main structure here. Now I'm going to work on some of the other kind of major design features of this piece. In particular we have angled corners, rounded corners, and then of course some things getting cut out. So for the angled and rounded corners we can use Blender's bevel tool. So let's do that first. But an important thing to know before you use the bevel tool, you need to do something called apply scale. This is a background math thing. If you don't do this, your beveling will be all screwed up. Control A, and then choose apply scale on each of your objects. For an angled corner, you're gonna wanna bevel it with only one segment. This area here is a cutout. So now what I need to do in order to create these cutouts here, I need to create an area that represents the empty space. So basically the area I'm going to remove from the model, that's what I'm modeling now. One thing to note about cutting out spaces here where basically the cutout space goes up to the edge of the mesh, the area that represents a negative space, so that mesh, needs to extend beyond the borders of the original object. Otherwise you're going to get weird hanging edges and things are kind of wonky. Of course, then you want to make sure that 
from the side view or whatever view is going to be cut out, you're making sure that the negative space mesh is in the proper depth that's going to be cut out of the object. For the actual cutting out process, we're doing a Boolean operation. So we want to go to our modifiers properties over here. With the object, it's going to have material taken out being selected. So let's add a Boolean modifier, operations difference, and select the object that we're going to be using to cut out the space. I can jump to our wireframe mode. And that looks about right. You can see there how there's a little bit of a cutout now. Let's hit apply and do the same thing for the bottom. And then once you've hit apply both times, you can just either get rid of those meshes or press hide. And we've already got the start of the structure forming right now. For a lot of these details here, all I'm going to do is create some basic meshes, like some cylinders and some lines, and just add those to the front of the piece to make it look good. Also, as I'm doing this here, I'm leaving parts hanging over off the side. That's perfectly cool. We'll clean that up towards the end. There's one more major feature we have to add to the front. And that's going to be the cutout for the door. Just for sanity purposes, I'm modeling mine with the door closed. <laughs> I don't want to deal with all the crap on the inside. So just like before, I'm going to model the negative space for the door and cut it out with a Boolean operation. So if I just temporarily hide the door cutout, you can see I've got a nice area for the door itself. So let's build that now. I'm going to actually use the door cutout piece to build the door. But what I'm going to do is scale it down so it's thinner than the area I just cut out. And then I will move it so it's sitting in the groove but still attached to the building. I want to create the illusion that there's panels in this door that kind of roll up or fold up like a garage door might. So I need to create a series of objects that represent that negative space and they need to be equally spaced apart. Step one is going to create one of those objects. Then we're going to pull out an array modifier, which allows you to duplicate an object. It's already added an extra plank off the side here. But we're going to adjust the parameters under relative offset, set x to 0. And we're going to start z at like 3. And you can see what that does is it creates another copy of the object below it, three heights away from the previous object. Now I'm going to adjust both this relative offset as well as the count to get a nice equally dispersed look of like panels on this door. Then when I hit apply, I've got seven equally spaced objects. I can do a Boolean operation on the door to add those grooves to it. And there we go. Very cool. Now I'm going to do something similar for the little kind of hanging upside down ramparts right here. But I'm not going to do a Boolean operation. I'm just going to use the array modifier to duplicate an object to create that regular spaced effect. So the trick here is going to be to play with the relative offset and the count such that your rightmost object its center is pretty well lined up with the center of your building. So the front part is done. Now we're going to move on to the side. First side over here, it's kind of the same thing we've always done. I'm going to build a basic box shape, do some vertex manipulation, add a few layers, play around with beveling, and go from there. Since these side pieces have a slant to them, when it comes to the surface detail, I'm going to first build it flat, and then I'm going to rotate it to match the shape of the face. So now let's line this guy up against the face, and here's how we're going to do that. You're going to notice a little orange dot floating right here when you have the object selected. That is the mathematical center of the object. It ends up there because of all sorts of weird operations, but that's not this place where we want it. We want it in the actual center of the object. Go up to Object, choose Set Origin, 
and do origin to center of mass volume. Now I can see that the little orange dot is floating in the middle there. And I want to move this piece such that the orange dot is resting on this slope of our slanted piece is going to come to rest on. Then I can just rotate it such that it looks about right. You know, it doesn't need to be perfect here. It just looks good enough. Then jump into edit mode. I got to pull the bottom down and I got to pull the top up a little bit. To do that, I'm going to press G to move. And then if I tap Z twice, it's going to lock them along the Z axis of the local axes of the object. It's one of those weird mathematical things, but you can see it's going to let me pull it straight down and still keep the same rotation I have. And I want to do the same thing for the top here. And now that's going to obviously make things a little bit messy looking, but like I said, all that stuff we're going to clean up at the end, so more about that later. So here's another neat little trick for you. We've got this front panel here where we've got this weird angle and there's these four different lines going up it. And we want to make these four front detail pieces only occupy the area of this without trying to do a lot of complex vertex manipulation. To solve this problem, I want to make sure that my four planks here are pretty much within my angle face plate. So you can see here, here's the angle face plate, top, bottom, the four planks are in there. We're going to add a Boolean operation, and this time I want to choose intersect. So this will keep the areas of the mesh where the two meshes overlap. And then for the other object, I'm going to choose my angle face. And just like that, it's reduced the objects down to where they intersect. So hit apply. And then I can move my detail out front. So we got the face mostly complete. Now it's time to start cleaning all this up. Let me hide all my reference images. And the first step we need to do is select all this stuff and make it one giant object. And what we're going to clean up are all these little pieces that are kind of floating off the edge over here. So to do that, we need to jump into edit mode. I need to select the vertices that are kind of floating over the edge. And you want to select them kind of one sub mesh at a time and move them to their really close. It doesn't have to be perfect, just pretty close. All right, so I've got all these vertices lined up here, pretty darn close. And then I want to select them all in one giant selection. And just make sure you've only selected all the vertices that need to be aligned. If anything else close by got selected, deselect them. And what you're going to do is scale them in the direction you want to align them with a special key combination. So S for scale. In this case, I want to scale them along the X axis. So press X to lock into the X axis. Then press the number zero above the letter area of your keyboard. You probably won't notice a whole lot because it's not going to do a whole lot of things visually. But you'll see now that all those vertices are aligned along that axis you selected. I'm going to repeat the process for all the other things. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to just stretch this piece out a little bit so it's a little bit longer. And that way it kind of feels like maybe there could be a lance of max on either side of the bay. That does create one potential issue with slicer programs because now there's what's called an internal face in here. So we do need to remove that. I'm switching to face select mode and trying to find the face completely inside there. I press X 
for delete, but choose faces. And there's going to be a few of them. And that should be all of them. And one last thing we need to do after we remove the faces, select everything, choose Shift N, more magic math, and that should make things nice and happy. All right, so the question we gotta think about now is what goes along the side and the back. If I bring out my reference image one more time, there is some sort of triangle structure that runs along the, uh, kind of the top of the hanger, so I'll add some of those. But what I'm mostly gonna do is pretty much take the design pieces we already have and just stick them along here, make your life a lot easier that way. Let's talk about the back here. I'm gonna do a few things. I'm gonna move some of these triangle pieces down here. But remember that other reference image I had? There's a series of windows back there, right? So let's build those. And there we go. Got some little things you can paint up as a window. Last thing we need to do is mirror the building so we got a complete building and not just a half thing. It's a little bit more complex than you might think. Because if you remember a little bit ago, we had to delete some internal faces in here to make your slicer happy. So here's kind of a cheater way to do this though to make it go fast. We'll jump in edit mode from above and very carefully the box select just select all the vertices that are right along the middle line. Press X for delete and choose only faces. And now you can see inside the building, that's awesome, that's what you want. The next thing you need to do is jump back into edit mode, select everything, and as I mentioned a few times throughout the video, there's this orange dot right here that's the mathematical center of the building. I need to move all the vertices now such that the center of the building is along the middle line here where the mirror is going to take place. Now it's time to add a modifier. We're going to add the modifier called mirror. And we want to make sure the axis is the x axis, which looks correct. The merge limit, we can probably keep it around 0 0.01, that's just default. And you want to choose clipping. Clipping will basically make sure that any vertices near the middle can't overlap each other and they'll clip together. So let's jump into edit mode. We want to zoom in really close. And you can see here with everything, now everything's still selected, but you can see here these vertices in the middle are a little bit spaced apart. So we want to move everything closer together just by a tiny bit and they should, they should jump pretty close and then you can move it a little bit more to fully overlap and now everything in the middle should be merged together. Let's hit apply in the mirror modifier. So the final step before printing this building out is to size it up. You can either do that here in Blender or your slicer, it's your choice. Just remember that even though in Blender it says meters, it's really millimeters. All right, so we're going to export this guy out as an STL file. Go File, Export, STL. Save it wherever you want to. Or the key step with Blender and STL files is to choose Selection Only with your object selected. And then you can import it into your favorite slicer and print it up. And there we go. Through the magic of 3D printing and a number of hours later, in my case about 13, you end up with a building just like this. Now this piece here, I ended up printing at about 180 millimeters by about 180. It's a little bit not square, but you get the idea. And sizing wise, the door as I built it, that comes out to make this thing kind of like a hanger for maybe a lance of light or medium mechs. The heavy and assault mechs don't actually fit through this hanger door here, but the light and medium ones do. So. Consider that when choosing your size. Maybe you need to break this up in a few pieces or find a really large 3D printer if you want to make it proper scale to the video game where it looks like they have at least a mech, or sorry, at least a lance, maybe
maybe even more than a lance on either side of the building. It's probably like, you know, <laughs> a lot bigger. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. And one quick programming note while I'm thinking of it, for the next few weeks here, I probably won't be doing one video a week. It'll kind of show up when it shows up because I've got a few big projects that I've essentially have half completed down in the basement that I really want to get done and there's no way I can get them done while still doing one video a week. So just for a few weeks here, we'll probably just kind of have a little bit of a random video release schedule, but hopefully the projects will be worth it. So thank you guys all for watching and have a great week or 10 days or two weeks or <laughs> shoot. I didn't got to think about that in the end. Oh well.